Welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you nail polishes that I wore this September. Before we get started, if you like seeing videos like this, make sure to give this one a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that too. So overall, September was a wonderful month for polishes for me. Altogether, I wore 23 nail polishes, which is pretty great, but that did include quite a few toppers. I was really feeling the toppers this month. And in terms of quality of the polishes, I just really loved what I did wear on my nails in September. Uh, there were very few polishes that I wasn't crazy about, and that's because I'd just gotten out my fall rack and I was eager to put on quite a few shades, so I went for some that I knew I would love first and I did not regret it. So if this is your first time checking out one of my What I Wore videos, we'll take a look at the pedicures that I wore first, not the pictures, just the polishes. Then we'll take a look at polishes that I liked okay, then polishes that I wore for manicures that I maybe am considering de-stashing, and then at the end, the manicures that I absolutely loved. So we'll start with pedicures first. One of the first polishes I wore was Aurora Borealis from OPI. This polish wasn't untried for me, but basically it is just your standard cream mauve shade. Although I found the shade to be completely beautiful, I really liked the formula. It was fully opaque in two coats, very easy to apply. I didn't feel like it was that unique to my collection. I know I've definitely got this two or three times over. And I also typically go for shades as pedicures that give me a little bit more pop. So I'm definitely holding on to this. I can't wait to wear it as a manicure, but I don't know if I'll be reaching for it as a pedicure again. Another one I wore as a pedicure this month comes from Orally. This is In Full Plume, which released in last year's fall collection. It is a gorgeous teal cream shade. This one I really enjoyed as a pedicure. It just gave me that pop of color I was looking for after I wore Aurora Borealis from OPI. And yeah, I'd, I don't think I'd ever worn a teal cream as a pedicure before, but I'm gonna do it more in the future because there's just something kind of fun about this color. <laughs> Then for my next couple pedicures, I did pull a few Zoyas. The first one is Zoya Soleil, which released sometime <laughs> in the past couple years. I don't remember exactly when, but I do remember it's a recent-ish release. And I purchased it when it released, really excited for a gorgeous copper. But unfortunately, this one did not satisfy. Uh, yeah, I hated this as a pedicure. It showed every ridge on my nail. I should have been expecting that considering it's a metallic, but I did wear several coats of a blurring base coat. Didn't matter, it still looked really rough and bumpy. Um, and I also just didn't like this color against my skin tone. It's, I think, a little bit too light of a copper to compliment me. It just kind of washed me out and looked a little frosty. So this one I might be passing on. And then I finished up the month of September and I feel like I've said October a few times in this video. If I have, disregard. <laughs> These are all polishes I've worn in September. Uh, but I finished up the month of September with Zoya Pepper as a pedicure, which is a gorgeous brick red cream. This one I purchased because I've heard lots of great things about it. I didn't think it was gonna be that unique to my collection, but when Zoya has those incredible sales, I can't help but pick up some of the ones I've heard hyped up. This was one of them and it did not disappoint. Gorgeous two coat formula, very easy to work with, and this shade looked beautiful on me and I think it would look beautiful on everybody. Moving on to my manicures now, I did wear a lot of manicures this month and have a good amount of polishes that are kind of in this middle category. The first one comes from Cirque Colors and I think it's called Pad Paracha. Could be saying that wrong. If I am, I apologize. But it is a really warm pink base with holographic glitter. I completely love this finish from Cirque Colors. Um, I have quite a few favorites in this finish from them. Just the way the jelly base builds up well in three coats to full opacity and the amount of sparkle you have on the nails from those holographic glitters is unmatched. Oh my gosh, they could just keep releasing these in more shades and I just continue buying them. <laughs> but this one specifically, I was not crazy about. I'd worn it a lot. I have a decent fill line. It's almost halfway empty. Um, I've worn this polish a lot, but I don't know. I, I think I keep wanting to like it more than I actually do on myself. It's just not the most flattering pink where it leans so warm um, and my undertones are quite warm. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite. It was okay though. 
Another one that I wore in September was Polish Streetwear. This one is a beautiful polish and I'm so glad I have it in my collection now. I passed on it when it initially released in Polish Pickup sometime last year for the 90s theme. Was that last year? See, they all run together. <laughs> But when we had the 90s polish pickup shop, um, this one released with that. I passed on it and regretted it and then found it in a D stash and had to snatch it up. I've been really excited to wear it, but when I put it on my nails, I loved it, but I just wasn't in the mood for it. Do you ever have polishes like that where you're really excited and you know it looks beautiful, but it's just not the right time to wear it. That's how I felt about this polish. Gorgeous color, the shifts in there from green to blue to purple, and the holographic flakes. I mean, on paper, it's everything I love, but I just, it wasn't the right time. So it's in the middle category. Kind of a similar situation with Bees Knees Lacquer, Ceremony of Judgment. This one I had high hopes for because it is a sibling to one of my favorite polishes released last year, Hey Tay 2021. This is like the slightly more blue version. It's got a smoky bluish gray base with shimmer that shifts red to copper to gold to green. It is so ethereal and just like, oh, just, kind of spooky, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I thought I would love it. I really did enjoy it, but I don't know. I There was just something about it. It wasn't the right time to wear it, and so I didn't love it quite as much as I had hoped, but I know next time I wear it, I will love it because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous polish. Um, yeah, love this one too. Another one that fell into that middle category comes from Essie. It's called Trend and Snap, and this is from the Expressy line. This one I've had for a little over a year, and it's taken me a while to get around to wearing it, but there was a time when I had to run home really quick, and my nails were all chipped, and so I wanted to redo them, but I didn't have much time. So I was like, oh, well, perfect opportunity. Let's pull one of the Expressy shades, and I went with this one. It is a rosy mauve color with silvery flakes. What I loved about this is that the flakes actually showed up on the nail. I know with some Essies, the silvery shimmer that shows so well in the bottle doesn't always come through, and I didn't feel like that was the case with this one. I could definitely see that sparkle against the mauve base. But I think the base color of this one kind of reminded me a little bit of Cirque Colors Pad Paracha. They're not close at all, but both warm toned pinks. And because of that, I just didn't feel like it was the most flattering shade for my skin tone. Um, gorgeous shade, built up really well. I think it needed three coats, but they did dry relatively quickly. Um, but yeah, not my absolute favorite, but a pretty polish nevertheless. I wore an Emily Damali shade this month. This one is LE260. It is a, I think, multi-chrome that has a purpley burgundy base with shimmer that shifts gold to green to blue. This one was incredibly shifty and when I put it on, I was definitely craving a rich, vampy, dark, for sure fall kind of shade. But it was very metallic-y on the nails and not that I don't love that, sometimes I do, but I did have a break kind of uh, during the time that I wore this and I felt like this was very unforgiving to that patch job that I did, which was so terrible. <laughs> but I think if I had worn it under any other circumstance, I would have really enjoyed this polish. It's not one I'll be parting with, it was beautiful, but just the manicure didn't turn out how I'd hoped. And again, kind of the same story with one from Polish. This one was called Jafar, and it released last year on the Polish site. They did like a kind of Disney villains, no, just Dis Disney, Disney characters collection. This one has a really purple leaning red base with intense shimmer that is like gold to green. The shimmer is so intense in here that I was actually surprised on my nail. I didn't see too much of the reddish purple base, which I was expecting. It looked very orangey copper gold on the nail with just a little flash every now and then of that pretty base. This one I also loved on my nails. I thought it looked really, really pretty, but um, I, again, just got kind of frustrated with myself for doing such a bad job patching that break that I had. Um, and I felt like because of the intensity of the shimmer in this one, it really exposed that bad patch job and I was insecure about it, so I didn't wear it for very long. Um, but it was a really pretty shade. And the final shade kind of in this middle category comes from Bluebird Lacquer. It's a recent release. This one is called It's Fall Coming Back to Me Now. It's got a cool 
brown base, um, but it's a multi-chrome, I think, that shifts from pink to blue, um, where it's got really strong shimmer that shifts pink to blue. You can kind of see it there. And it has holographic flakes. This released this year on the Bluebird Lacquer site, and it's a beautiful, beautiful polish. Just kind of again with the case of I wasn't really in the mood for this kind of shade at this time. I just, you'll see in a second what, what kind of shades I was drawn to, but this was a gorgeous shade. We'll be wearing it again. Just didn't quite make it to that love category. So I'm actually not planning to de-sash any of the polishes that I wore in September. Uh, I liked pretty much everything, so that's exciting. So moving on to the polishes that I loved so much. The first one was a rewear, and it comes from Stella Chroma. It's called Corporate Magazine Still Suck. This released in polish pickup also for the the 90s theme, I think. April 2021, wow, look at that. I have two from the same same PPU, the Polish Streetwear and then this one too. Um, but this one I loved. I knew I was gonna love it. It was one I pulled to rewear this season and I just was eyeing it all season, all month. When am I gonna wear that Stella Chroma? I can't wait to wear it. And I was just like, okay, we're doing it. We're wearing it right now. <laughs> it is a really beautiful olive -y kind of chartreuse leaning olive. Um, there's definitely a lot of yellow in the base and it's got some subtle shimmer as well as some flakes that shift gold to copper and maybe some holographic too. This one had a remarkable formula. I believe it was a two coater, but maybe three on longer nails was super smooth and easy to work with, and my gosh, the finished look was just breathtaking. I loved wearing this, did not wanna take it off my nails. So, so pretty. And I don't know that I would say I am completely in love with very many shades like this. I'm not personally a huge olive green person, um, but the way this looked on me, I just felt like it was so flattering and just so well made. I love this polish. I'm hoping it'll come back sometime for Polish Pickup Rewind because it's one that I would even consider purchasing a, purchasing a backup bottle of. That's how much I love it. Another love from me this month comes from Glam Polish, and this is called Aries. It is one that is so hard to describe, so I'm gonna try. <laughs> it has like a yellowy orange base, but the shimmer in it is super strong and intense. It shifts green to gold, and it's got holographic glitter. Depending on your lighting and how the light hits it, sometimes it looks more like a gold polish, sometimes it looks more orange, and then sometimes it even looks a little bit like a reddish orange. It's really, really interesting. I wore this early in the month of September, and I almost wish I would have worn waited until October to wear it because the colors in here really remind me of the leaves changing colors which we have going on where I live right now. It's so beautiful. But yeah, the shifts in here are just super autumnal. I really love the glitters as well. It just had a nice sparkle and the formula was relatively easy to work with. I think it did need three coats to build up and it was a little bit on the sheer side but nothing that I it didn't bother me. <laughs> then the rest of the polishes that I wore this month and loved had some kind of topper. Yeah, I went like topper bananas this month. I just couldn't get enough of them. One of the combos that I wore earlier in the month is OPI and Moonshine Manny. The OPI is Put It In Neutral and the Moonshine Manny is I Saw The Shine, which is a Project Dupe It polish for SE Shine of the Times. So Put It In Neutral, I'd never worn this as a base before, I don't think. Um, at least not as like a full manicure maybe to swatch something over um wow this is beautiful it might be my new go-to kind of nail blurring natural looking mannequin hands jelly polish <laughs> That was a lot, uh, but it might be my new go-to polish for that kind of thing. It was um, Static Nails Barely There, but that one leans a little bit more brown than this one, and this one I just feel like looks a little bit more natural. It's more true to color of what my nail beds look like without polish on when they're not stained. <laughs> So I thought this one was great. I loved put it in neutral on its own, but I knew I was gonna add a topper. Um, and I've been really wanting to wear Moonshine Manny Shine of the Times. This topper did not disappoint. It is a really beautiful iridescent flaky topper that shifts every color you can imagine. It was a little bit thick, a little bit thick on application, but I think I added some thinner and it was perfectly fine. And the two of these together were, so pretty. Um, this is definitely a combination I'm going to be trying again, maybe sooner rather than later, but I just didn't get tired of it. Every time I looked up 
my nails. I loved, loved, loved how this looked on me. Then the next combo I wore was combining 90 Lacquer November 2016 along with DRK Nails Time is Fixed. So I actually wore the 90 Lacquer November 2016 on its own for a few days, I think two days, and I wasn't crazy about it. I wanted to save it up for November, but honestly, when I swatched on the swatch wheel, it was a lot brighter than I was anticipating. I thought it would have kind of a dark berry look to me, which it kind of looks like that in uh, the video, but on my nails, it looked pretty bright pink. And so I was like, mm, did I make a mistake adding this to my fall rack? It really feels like something I would wear more in the summertime. Um, and I wasn't sure I was gonna keep it. I wasn't sure I was gonna like the manicure. I was even thinking it was gonna end up in the de stash list for this month. Well, I ended up adding the DRK Nails Topper Time is Fix, which released in Hella Handmade Creations in October of last year. And this completely changed this manicure. Um, this is another iridescent flaky topper, but the flakes shift more blue and gold and green and copper. These two combined were so magnificent because the hollow in November 2016 from 90 Lacquer is stunning. So in the sun, you got all that rainbow sparkle. But then when you went into the shade, you got all of the flash of the different colors from the iridescent flaky topper. So it was like no matter what your lighting situation was, you were seeing something so incredibly gorgeous. I'm still not 100% sure I'm going to hold on to this 90 lacquer. Um, I might and then try again actually wearing it in the summer next year. Uh, see if I love it then. But this combo regardless was beautiful. Three more manis. One that I wore on the first official day of fall um, was OPI It's a Piazza Cake. I wore this on its own for a couple days and I was inspired by my good friend Carolina at Gotta Love Polish. Um, she wears this as her first day of fall manicure every season and I hadn't tried it before so I was like what better time. <laughs> it is a gorgeous burnt orange cream shade. Definitely an OPI staple. Probably one you have in your collection or something very similar to it, just a cream shade. But it was a really gorgeous shade of orange and I did really like how it looked on me. Well, I wasn't quite ready to take it off after a couple days or maybe just one day of wear, so I actually added a topper. I added KB Shimmer Take It or Leaf It, another untried and wow. This topper was amazing. It shifts from gold to green to copper maybe a little bit of blue at extreme angles it and red there's red in there it's just beautiful it looks like crushed fall leaves in a bottle and i believe this is still available if it is i'll link it below in fact i will link anything that i've talked about in today's video that's still available down in the description box um but this was an incredible topper and interestingly enough i was planning to put this on uh my OPI, when I applied the OPI, I just kind of ran out of time and then added it the next day or so. And Carolina actually did the same thing and we didn't even plan it this year. And she doesn't always top, take it or leave it with the KB Shimmer. So it was just a fun kawinky dink. We were accidentally twinning, it was great. So another manicure that I loved and one that I might be replicating on the first day of fall forever, maybe. Two more manicures. <laughs> I really was feeling the KB Shimmer this month, so I did another combo with two KB Shimmers. Uh, this one's KB Shimmer Cats in Pajamas, and this one is a, a Star is Formed, which is a holographic topper. So KB Shimmer Cats in Pajamas came out in the, ooh, I don't know. This came out two or three years ago in Polish Pickup in a December Polish Pickup. It was one I swatched and really enjoyed, and didn't really reach for again for a while. It had been a few years, but this polish had been on my mind for a really long time. Like I remembered that I had it and wanted to wear it this spring. Didn't grab it because it doesn't really say spring to me. It's got a gray base with orange to gold to pink shifting multi-chrome flakes. Um, but I didn't really go for it in the spring because it didn't feel spring. Still didn't really want to wear it in the summer. So I knew I wanted to get it on my nails this fall. It wasn't like, what I was expecting. I think I built it up so much in my head that when I actually wore it, I wasn't crazy about it. It was pretty, I did like it, but it was just kind of, hmm, that's nice. <laughs> but then I added the topper KB Shimmer A Star Is Formed, which is one of my favorite holographic toppers. If you can track this down, I recommend it. I got it this year and I've worn it at least four, maybe five times. 
Um, it's just a really beautiful, dense, scattered holographic. Um, yeah, this totally transformed this mani into something I loved completely. I think what Cats in Pajamas was missing was just that little bit of sparkle. And so when I added a star is formed and got this outside in the sun, oh my goodness, I just, my breath was taken away. I was in love. It was tremendously it was just gorgeous it was amazing <laughs> and then the manicure that I finished the month with kind of had a similar feeling I, this is why I went for the toppers this month so I started off with one from moonshine Manny. this is calling feeling cranberry saucy and it was another one like the Stella Chroma like the KB shimmer that I just was really eyeing on my fall rack couldn't wait to wear but I actually got this one on my nails and I wasn't super crazy about it. It did have a thicker formula and it was thick, but it was sheer. And so when I built it up in three coats, I could still see a little bit of my nail line showing through, I think. And I just wasn't, wasn't crazy about it. It didn't look on me the way that I had imagined it would. I don't even think I described it, um, but that's why I started. I started inserting the videos of what they look like up close so you can see them. Um, let me know in the comments if you, if you like seeing that. But it's got a cranberry, of course, base with multi-chrome flakes that are really crushed in different sizes that shift from gold to green to copper. And then it's got some really subtle holographic as well. So this one on its own, Moonshine Manny feeling cranberry saucy. It was another one I was thinking I might de-stash. I still might, I don't know. But it did turn out to be an amazing manicure when I added a topper from Rogue Lacquer. The topper I'm talking about is one probably a lot of you are familiar with as well. It is Batsy and it is a black flaky topper. So I added a really thin layer of this on top of all my nails and it just gave it a little bit of extra edge to it and it made it so much more interesting to me and I ended up loving this. I think I wore these polishes, um, <laughs> either this one by itself or this one, for a total of five days, which is a really, really long time for me. But I will say the key with Rogue Lacquer Batsy is to go in super thin on your coats. It is a dense, flaky topper. All of Rogue Lacquer's toppers are pretty dense. If you go in for a regular coat, you're gonna have a lot of black flakies, which if you if that's what you want, then awesome. <laughs> but most of the time for me, I still wanna see that base color underneath, so I was really happy with how this turned out with those super thin coats. Definitely recommend this combo and just the Rogue Lacquer Batsy Topper in general. Those are all the polishes that I wore this September. Again, I feel like I was saying like sometimes September, sometimes October in this video. Sorry about that. They were all polishes that I wore in September. It was a great month for polishes. I love that I used so many toppers. I love that I started digging into my fall rack and started wearing some vampy shades. And I can't wait to share with you what I've worn already in October. Oh gosh, they've been some, some beautiful manicures. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.